I'm Susie, and I am a zookeeper here at Woodland Park Zoo in the Ambassador Animal Area. And I'm here with Harry the Striped Skunk. Harry is one of the animals that comes out around the zoo and all over the city and does programs so people can get an up-close look at how awesome he is. Being a striped skunk, he's an animal that you can find right here in your own backyard and all across the U.S. Many of you might not even realize that you have skunks living nearby, but they often tend to sleep during the day. They're nocturnal, so they're awake at night or in those dawn and dusk hours. And they might sleep under things like a porch or in a hollowed out tree trunk, or they can dig their own dens if there's some soft dirt around. And they would spend their time sleeping there during the day, and then when they are up and about at night, they would be foraging for their favorite foods. Harry's an omnivore, so he eats both meat and vegetation. And his favorite food to eat is bugs. Skunks love bugs and slugs and mice and roaches and worms and things that we might consider pests. They help to keep those out of your house and out of your garden. They use their long claws to dig in the dirt and their excellent sense of smell to track down their favorite prey. Now skunks, they tend to live alone except for in the springtime when they would be with their families, in which case um, a male would find a female and a female would eventually dig her own burrow and have some skunk babies. She might have about three or four babies at a time. And as they got older, they would start to look a little more skunk-like, start to grow some long fur, and they would venture out with mom. And that's often where a lot of people see skunks, is they might see mom or some babies in the backyard. Baby skunks are really playful. They have to learn how to hunt and how to interact socially. So they spend a lot of time romping. They might uh, bite one another. They chase one another. They've even been, no been known to play with dogs sometimes. So if you see a skunk in your backyard, you can watch them from afar, you'll never know what you see. You also might be able to smell a skunk that lives in your backyard or on a hike or somewhere you've been. Of course, that is what they're most known for is those scent glands and their ability to spray predators. Skunks only spray when they feel like danger is really close by. It takes a lot of energy to build the, the thing that they use to spray, that oil in their glands. And so when they do spray, it leaves them defenseless until they can rebuild it, which might take a few days. So that is one reason why they have such dramatic white and black coloring, like Harry is showing off here with his beautiful luscious fur coat. It's a warning sign. So it's a visual warning sign to any animals that danger is near. And if they get closer, they might get sprayed. The next thing they might do to warn a potential predator are short, short forward charges or huffing or even handstands. So they really like to put on a whole display to let a predator know, hey, don't come any closer, bad things are gonna happen. And if all else fails, they will turn their rear ends in the direction of the predator and spray that oil on them. I've never been sprayed myself, but I would think it would kind of like be like getting sprayed with bear spray or pepper spray or something of the likes where it's just really smelly and has that strong, maybe stinging odor a little bit. Harry here doesn't spray us though. You can tell he's really comfortable around people. He is hanging out eating food on his mark right here, which is a trained behavior for him. He is desensed to some tactile stimulation so that he can participate in his own uh, me medical exams. So you can see if I ask Harry to touch, he lets me touch him on the back. And it might not be his most favorite thing, but it's really useful for when the vets come and do his annual checkup. So if Harry were to get nervous all of a sudden, you might see him doing some of those behaviors like sticking his tail straight up in the air, doing some of those handstands, but he is just out here enjoying those snacks. Today he is eating some different types of vegetables, um, sweet potato, he likes green peppers, he really likes dog kibble, and of course bugs like I mentioned before. Harry also knows a few other trained behaviors, so he knows how to stand up. Good job, Harry. And he knows how to do some other things, like touch his nose to a target stick. So this is particularly useful for trying to redirect the animal. So let's say I want him to turn around. Good, Harry. And Harry loves playing the training game. He loves earning his favorite foods. Let's show off one more behavior here, bud. All right, that was a very slow uh, circular spin there. 
Harry has been really sleepy these last few months. A lot of Northwest native animals, they do sort of slow down in the winter and the spring as food becomes more scarce. They don't truly hibernate, skunks don't, but they do get sleepy and they slow down. So in a few months, we just start to see him kind of wake up and come back to his normal self and be much more active. But in the meantime, <laughs> he's just enjoying being out here with all the different sights and smells around him. So like I mentioned, if you ever see a skunk in the wild, admire them from afar. You can appreciate them for their help in pest control. And maybe you'll even get a glimpse of moms and their babies out and about playing around. And you can rest assured that if the skunk has the chance, if he encounters you on a, tra a trail, he'll try to run the opposite direction and give you plenty of space as well. All right, well, Harry has been an excellent guest here today for our Keeper Talk. I'm gonna ask him to go back into his own crate. It's a behavior that he chooses to do all on his own. And have a great day, Harry. See you later.